Okay, continuing with assignment four, our vector logo. We're going right to where we're posting our final logos. We have already posted our, our proving ground sketches, right? Our three approaches. Now we are choosing our approach. So these were the three I posted. In order to get full credit for that proving ground, remember you just need to post your three different approaches, central symmetrical, dynamic, positive, negative space. And you need to comment on someone else's post and tell them your preferences. Do write the name of the person you're responding to because sometimes it can be difficult to, to know. So once you've done that, you've met all the requirements for proving ground number two. And then you can choose which logo you're going to turn into a vector. And I chose my positive negative space one. So then we go to the next part of unit nine, which is our logo. And we first post our sketch. So I have this in my assignment four folder. I have my clean sketch, right? Then what we did is we opened up this new program that's in the assignment. It's vector.com. This is our freeware vector program. I'm just going to sign in with my Google. And it will remind me what? What happened? There it is. All right. It will remind me of where I was. I had actually saved it twice because I was playing around with different stuff. So I can just pick up where I left off. That's the advantage of signing in on this freeware. So in the last video, I showed how to do this one and this shape. Remember, we're just doing solid black shapes. But what's nice about this shape and this shape is nothing needed to be cut out of them, right? This shape needs to have stuff cut out of it. So I'll show you how to do that. But let's, let's do a quick review. So under layers here, you'll see each path. The only one I have locked is my sketch. And it's also helpful for your eyes and just for clarity to take the opacity way down on your sketch. So you can really see the clear edges of the vectors you're making on top of it. Every vector we're going to make is going to be, you can see it here on the sides, filled with solid black at 100%. And we're always going to have the border. You can see it showing a red border here. We're always going to have that just turned off, unchecked. All right, now. Once you have a path, you can copy and paste it. So I can say Command C, Command V, and it'll make a new path. It's like duplicate. And then I can stretch it, just like with transform, and rotate it. So a lot of vectors will use the same shapes over and over again in different ways. And in some ways, that can be a better type of design than just matching your refined sketch. So for instance, I might want to do that instead of matching my sketch exactly. It's an option, right? Which was just duplicating that and then stretching it out. So once you plot the points, which you can always double click to see more, more clearly, then you can always utilize them. And you can always just turn them off if you're not sure if you want to use them. But let, let me sh remind you how to draw, right? We're going to use the pen tool. The easiest way if you're starting out is just to click and release and draw as polygons, as straight lines, only as straight lines, always just clicking and releasing until you get back to the beginning and then you close your path and then you can set it to fill and you can turn off any border. Now, once you've finished and you've contained your shape, then you're going to leave the pen tool. It's not going to be on anymore. Because as soon as you've closed a path, it switches off the pin tool. Then you can double click on it and you'll see your individual anchor points. And I'm using command plus to zoom in. I'm using spacebar to move. Okay, double click, you can see your anchor points. Each anchor point is square. If you click on that and drag, when you're not on any tool, it will move the anchor point. So I can refine it if I wanted to change where I plotted it, right? But you got to double click and you got to click right on that anchor point. And then each anchor point, because you plotted them as polygons, as straights, they're each going to have what's called a cornering tool or a rounding tool. So if I want to round this, which I do, I can pull on that circle and round it. 
within limitations because it's only going to be able to round within the parameters of the space it's given. Right. So what if I don't want to use the rounding tool? What if I want to set the curves myself? This is new. Double click, see your anchors, and then click on your anchor. Double click on just the anchor and you'll get these handles. If I hold nothing down and use the handles, notice that I can stretch them, I can move them, but they're going to move equally on both sides, just like the rounding tool. But if I hold down command while I'm using these handles, I can change the angle of them. And as soon as I let go, they'll be even again. That's to try to give you even curves. So how do I do that? I double click on the anchor and I get the curves. So between all those tools, you can get any two-dimensional shape you want, as refined as you want. If you click right on the anchor and hit delete, you will delete the anchor. If you want to add a new one, you just click on the path and you can add a new anchor. So they can always be changed from straights to curves and back again just by double clicking on the anchor. But first you have to see the anchor, which means you double click on the shape. Right, so I've got that one done. Now let's do this one. Same thing, pin tool to start. I got to plot anchors before I can modify them. This time I'm going to plot curves as I go. So I'm going to click and then drag to plot a curve. And then if I don't want to start with another curve, I can click on the anchor and then go to a straight, like here, and then end on a straight. Then I set my parameters, I fill it with black, I turn off the border, and I double click inside. And if I want to round any of these, I can. I actually don't think I do want to round any of them. So to undo your rounding, you just pull it all the way to the anchor. All right, now for the complicated shapes. I'm going to start with just the big one right here. Just this whole thing. Sometimes you can build it with your shape tools. You know, you have a lot of shape tools here. You're welcome to use any of them. But we're going to turn them into just black and white shapes. So I could just use my circle tool, my ellipse tool, and draw that to get me started. Even though perfect circles are usually reserved for um, central symmetrical logos, this could be a nice way to plot just a really clean curve there. Okay, now though I want to add this little bit to it, so I'm going to use my pen tool. I'm going to start inside, or maybe right on the edge of my circle. And then I'm going to use my polygons, right? My straight lines. And go back like this, and then contain the shape. Then I'm going to fill that with black and no border. Now I can double click on it and get my anchor points, and then I can round it out. So it looks like it's just coming right off of the circle. The difference is, I have to turn this into curves, kind of figure out how to round that so it's nice and smooth. Okay, the difference is, this is now two shapes, right? There's the circle, and then there's the shape I made. So if I select both of them, You'll see them as different paths. Here I have a circular path, and then I have the one I made. So this is how you can combine them. You can merge paths in vector. I'm going to hold down Shift and select both of them. And now since they're overlapping, I get new options. And one of those options is to unite them, or add them together, or merge them into one. So I'm going to do that. 
And now it's just one path. Now I'm going to change that to having just a border so I can see it. And now I'm going to alter this path because I need to hook it in there. So that's kind of cutting into my circle. So there's lots of ways to go about it. So I'm actually just going to delete that one and I'm just going to draw it outright with the pen tool. So I'm going to click, then I'm going to go to where I think I can set the curve, which is maybe there, and then drag out and set that curve. And then I'm going to click where I want the curve to end. I can use the scroll wheel on my mouse. Then I'm going to click, I'm going to set the next curve. Then I'm going to click where I want it to end. Ah. Okay, but now I double clicked on it to get these handles. If I hold down command, I can make it so it's not curved on one side, but curved on the other. Right. Now I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to move this handle in by holding down command. So it's a straight, and now I'm going to click and drag and set that curve. It's all very subtle. And then I'll set the curve here, and then I'll set to a straight here that I turn into a slight curve, and then I'll set it to here, which I turn into a bigger curve. So once you get the hang of the pen tool, you can hold down Command, drag this in, you can get really any shape, no matter how complicated, in very few anchor points. That's often the goal. Hold down Command, bring in this curve, set my next curve. I'm going to use spacebar to move down. Okay, set the next curve nice and shallow, like that. Whoops, set it. Now click, click on command, move this back. This is a little more labor intensive. It's a little bit easier in Illustrator. Hold command, push this back, because I can go out to a straight now. Just plot some straights, then plot a curve. And it's going to be different for each of your projects, right? And then plot my curve by ending it. So now I have a contained path that outlines this whole thing. I just did it with the pen tool one time through, just modifying my anchor points as I go. I'm going to fill it with black. I'm going to undo the, the anchor. And then I can turn off my sketch, see how that looks. My sketch is the only one that's locked. Okay, now I've got that shape, but I'm going to turn on the border and turn off the color just so I can see it, and I'm going to turn on my sketch again. Now I've got to make the shapes I want to cut out of that shape. So I'll start with the simple ones, and maybe I can just copy and paste. So I'm going to use my pen tool. I'm going to click, click. Make the curve, hold down Command, click the, the one side of the curve, go back to here. There I go, there's my shape. And if I want to edit it, I can double click it right on the path. Oops. And I can set a curve if I want. And I can also add an anchor point if I want, right? And then curve that. 